This video will explain SSE Edit Cleaning, what it does, and how to do it. I'll also show you how to add your DLC plugins to MO2 so they never get updated. I know you're looking to get into the video, but before we do that, please consider liking this video, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. This helps me continue making videos and ensure the series continuation. Also check out my Discord, link to that down below. It's a great place to ask questions and have modding conversations. There's also tons of useful links to resources for all your modding troubles. Seriously, go there. Lastly, I have a lot of people asking me for an EMB guide. EMBs can be added at any time really, so I've made a guide on my personal channel. It's straight and to the point, unlike these announcements. Link in the description, go watch it. Okay, back to the video. First things first, this video is part of a series of guides for MO2. If I'm talking about something you don't understand, it was covered prior. See the playlist in the description. So plugin cleaning, what is it and what does it do? To understand this, we first have to define some terminology. Identical to master records or ITM records for short, deleted references and deleted nav meshes. These are the three main issues that cleaning your plugins will resolve and we'll go over why they exist in a little bit. For now, let's start with explaining records, references, and nav meshes. As we already know, plugin files contain data necessary for their changes to take effect. These bits of data are called records. We'll now be referring to them as such. Records are literally everything from damage an iron dagger does to the height of an NPC's cheekbones. So again, literally all the data a plugin needs to function. But what happens when one record affects the data of another record, or maybe one record needs another record to function? These records have to be connected somehow, and this is done through something called references. So when we say a record references another record, you can physically think of an arrow pointing from one piece of data to another. Nav meshes, on the other hand, are used by NPC AI to pathfind around the game world. Here, I've loaded up Skyrim in the Creation Kit, Bethesda's in-house game editor, and set the nav meshes to be visible. All the terrain covered by the red polygons you are seeing are places accessible to NPCs in the game. Without them, NPCs, including companions and enemies, cannot move around. Hopefully now, identical to master records, deleted references, and deleted nav meshes are somewhat self-explanatory. ITM records being duplicate records that are identical to one another, deleted references being references that have been deleted, and deleted nav meshes being the same. Okay, but why are ITM records, deleted references, and nav meshes an issue? I mean, that is really the underlying question here. Why worry about cleaning plugins at all? Well, in the case of ITM records, they are probably the least worrisome, as the data is the same in both duplicates. But at the end of the day, having multiple copies of a record is ultimately useless, so removing useless data is good practice. Deleted references and nav meshes, however, can cause some pretty big issues. If a reference record is deleted in the creation kit, the object that it was pointing to is left with nothing on the other end, and this could cause some things in-game to break, or even crashes. Instead of deletion, SSE Edit disables these records, which means that they still exist, but are flagged as unusable and thus much safer. Finally, deleted nav meshes are an issue because we want our NPCs to be able to go where they are intended, right? Makes sense. Okay, now that we know all that, let's discuss how these issues are created. Most of the time, they just happen by accident. While creating plugins in the creation kit, modders oftentimes access records just to see information for themselves. This prompts the creation kit to think that changes were made and to duplicate the records from the overwritten plugin to the new one. This is an ITM record. Deleted references occur when something is created and removed in the kit, and master nav mesh deletions can happen accidentally too. Sometimes, however, mod authors purposefully create ITM records and they are needed for mods to function, which is why certain mods should not be cleaned. Okay, enough chit chat, let's go ahead and download SSE Edit and wipe away any excess dirt. SSE Edit is the program that we'll use to clean plugins, but it's also a really important tool for more experienced modders. Keep it in your back pocket so that we can come back to it more thoroughly at a later date. Search for the SSE Edit Nexus page or follow the link in the description. Go to Files and download manually. Because this is a tool, we'll be extracting the archive into our modding tools folder we have made. Create a folder named SSE Edit, 
then open up the archive we downloaded. Drag the contents into that folder. Now open up Mod Organizer 2 and add the executables to the launcher. We've done this a bunch of times already, so you should know the process. Do this two times, once for sseedit.exe and one for sseeditquickautoclean.exe. All right. So the first thing we need to know is which of our plugins even need to be cleaned. And this is actually really easy to do with Loot. Go ahead and open up Loot, then sort your plugins. If you don't have Loot installed, shame on you because this is a series. So go back and watch the last episode. Link down below and in the top right. At this point, Loot has flagged every active plugin that we have that needs to be cleaned. Just scroll down the list to see each one. As you can see, Dawnguard, Hearthfires, and Dragonborn have been flagged, as well as Update. These all need to be cleaned and any other dirty plugins you may have installed. Loot will also flag any mods that shouldn't be cleaned. For me, that's XMPSE and Morrow Loot. All the rest are more than likely safe. In this guide, I will be cleaning all the main Bethesda plugins, so Update, Dawnguard, Hearthfires, and Dragonborn. Because these are all plugins that everyone playing Skyrim Special Edition has, this guide can be basically followed verbatim. The cleaning process is exactly the same for other dirty plugins that are specific to your load order, so don't forget to clean those as well after you finish watching this video. One thing that is unique to the official plugins is that every time Steam checks your Skyrim game folder for its appropriate game files, like when Skyrim is updated, the clean plugins will be flagged as unoriginal and be restored. And while you can reclean your plugins every time this happens, it's a complete pain. So to prevent this, we will be copying our clean plugins to Mod Organizer and overriding the originals in our load order. That way, our clean DLC stays clean. Obviously, this is a special case and doesn't need to be done with other plugins. Let's go ahead and begin the cleaning process. Explanations aside, it really is trivial, like super basic. Run the SSC Edit Quick Auto Clean executable you added to MO2 earlier. Close out of any update notes and mod author messages. Then simply select the plugin you want to clean and hit OK. SSC Edit will load up any prerequisite ESPs for you and clean the plugin. After the log says the process is finished, we can close out and repeat the process for any other dirty plugins we may have. For this guide, we're going to do it three more times to get the DLC finished. Now that the process is complete and we've cleaned all four main DLC plugin files, let's go ahead and add the DLC plugins to MO2 so we don't have to worry about Bethesda reverting them to their old filthy selves. Go to the Skyrim Special Edition directory and go inside the data folder. Select the Update, Dawnguard, Hearthfires, and Dragonborn ESMs using Control click then add them to an archive using the archive software of your choice. If you're following along with my guides, we're using 7-zip, so right-click, Hit 7-zip and select add to data.zip. This will create a zip archive with your clean DLC in the data folder. From there, you can drag the archive into the downloads panel of MO2 or add the archive using the install mod from archive button, which is what I will do. After it is added from MO2, we can delete the archive from Skyrim's data folder. Next, install it like you would any other mod. Name it something like Cleaned Masters and place it below the data folder DLC to have our clean plugins take priority. You'll know you've done it correctly when you see the white lightning bolts appear next to the data folder DLC, denoting that they are being completely overwritten. Sweet. You now know how to make your plugins clean and pristine. You might not see anything different in your game, but know that you've eliminated one more potentially harmful thing from hurting your precious load order and stability. Have you liked the video and subscribed? Awesome! Leave any questions in the comments or my Discord. If you like this video, you'll love the fast ENB guide on my other channel. That's at the bottom. Next video in the guide is to the right, and the guide overview is to the left. See you in the next one.